In this video tutorial, we're going to discuss some of the advanced editing techniques that are available within Sonic Studio's Soundblade LE product. We'll take these four files, and instead of holding down the command keys we've been doing in the past, we're just going to simply drag and drop them into the project's edit decision list, or EDL. We'll notice that all four of our songs got placed within this edit decision list, but we want to take a look at the beginning of this sound file, so we'll show some zooming techniques. So if we click and drag across a segment, hold down the command key and the option key, Soundblade LE automatically zooms to a section. So we want to trim the beginning of this sound file. Let's use that same technique where we click and drag across a selection, command key and the option key, and Soundblade LE automatically zooms to that segment. We'll trim the beginning of the sound file up to where the musician starts playing. Take a listen. Nice start. So we want to move the sound file from where it stands now to the two second mark, which is where DDPs have to start in order for them to be compliant with the specification. If we hold down the control key over a selected sound file, we'll notice that a contextual menu appears, and we'll use the one called Move Segments. We'll move this segment to two seconds, and Soundblade LE brings our first sound file to two seconds automatically. Let's trim the tail end of this sound file. We use the command G zoom to selection function to zoom to the entire sound file, and then zoom in again to the tail end of this. We'll adjust our fade, and zoom in one more time, and let's take a quick listen to the out here. It's a little abrupt, so let's trim this sound file a little differently using a fade out technique. I can grab a fade and move it in the middle, move the entire fade. At the top, move the in section of the fade. Or at the bottom, and move the out section of the fade. So let's listen to that again. It's beautiful. It maintains the reverb tail and goes to black perfectly. So let's adjust this second sound file start time. We'll auto zoom. So we we'll want to eliminate the beginning of this sound file. There's some stuff in here. Where the artist says and, there's our downbeat on the one. So we'll adjust our fade to here and zoom in a little tighter to the beginning, make sure that we've got it. Looks good. Could use a tiny bit of trimming. We'll move it to there. Let's take a listen. Selecting the sound file, hitting the space bar. There's our one beat. So I want to time this one beat to the one beat of this last sound file. Let's show a technique for doing that. Let's take a listen here. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one. So there's our one beat. We'll select this sound file, hold down the control key, select Move Segments, and select the Where button. We'll ask it to move to the playhead, which is the red line where we just stopped our playback. Hit Move, and Soundblade LE moves that sound file to the one beat. Let's take a look at the end of this sound file. We'll select Command G to zoom to the sound file. There's also some dead air here, so we'll use our quick key commands to zoom to a segment. We will trim this sound file. In this case, the artist wants these two files to crossfade. Based on this section here, we'll set a selection reference point at that area. So we'll select this sound file, use the control key to move segments to this SRP. Selection reference point, select move. Soundblade LE automatically moves that sound file to that area. We'll use the fade tool to adjust the in fade of track three. And use the control modifier keys here to adjust the out fade of the previous song.
Just like that, we have a nice advanced crossfade between these two songs. Let's just take a look at the third file now. Using the command E, zoom to entire track. We'll zoom into these last two songs. Adjust the tail of the third track. It just needs a tiny bit of a fade out. And let's just adjust this fourth track manually. We'll use the drag bar within Premaster CD that allows me to place this sound file anywhere. In this case, we'll drop it just a second or two behind the outfade of this last file. You know I'd like that to be a little bit tighter, so we'll zoom in select this sound file and use the drag bar to bring it close to where the playhead is. There we go, that's how you manually adjust and move a sound file within Soundblade LE. Let's zoom to this file using the Command G or Zoom to Selection key. And at the end here, the client wants this song to fade out just a little bit and fade back in before the end of the sound file. So we'll listen here. And we'll insert a crossfade at this point, holding down the control key and hitting G, puts a crossfade into a sound file within Soundblade LE. We'll hold the shift key and adjust the fade of this file, make it a little bit longer. We'll take a quick listen across this fade and notice that it doesn't have, it doesn't reduce in volume. It has the same amplitude across the entire fade. So we'll adjust the in fade of this song. We'll move it over to the right a little bit, and now we have a nice smooth fade out to black and fade back up into the song itself. But let's make these a little shorter. We'll adjust this fade out at this end and adjust this fade in here. And now it's a little bit more abrupt, but it does fade into black and back up. There we go. Let's adjust this final fade, moving it closer to the end of the song file. Zoom and listen. We'll adjust the out fade, giving it some time. Listen one more time. There we go. So let's look at all of the sound files within this project. We now have four sound files placed within a, a project's edit decision list. And we've done some editing to them, but now we actually need to mark them so that we can put this out to a DDP. If we select all using the Command A key, and from the mark menu, we select edited black to marks. Premaster CD automatically places start and stop marks at the beginnings and ends of each sound file where there's digital black. But we have one small issue here at the end of this sound file where we placed the uh, digital fade to black and fade up from black that the client wanted at the end of this song. So let's zoom in here and we'll notice that because it fades to black here, Soundblade LE placed an end mark and a start mark in here, and we don't want that. Let's select this area, and from the mark menu, we'll delete this mark. Now, if we look in the mark info dialog box, we'll see that we have all four of our songs with their metadata intact, and if we look at the entire EDL, we have four tracks, and this is pretty much ready to go for a DDP. You need to enter some additional metadata in here with album, title, artist, UPC EAN numbers if you have those, track title, artist title, and any international standard recording codes or ISRC that the artist or label has provided for you. So let's review what we've talked about here today. We discussed dragging and dropping of sound files from the finder without auto marking, zooming in and around a sound file and an edit decision list or EDL, adjusting or trimming fade ins and fade outs, moving segments using the move segments dialog box, moving segments manually, crossfading between songs, 
crossfade editing using the edited black to marks feature and removing stray start or end marks. Thanks for viewing this video tutorial, and if you have any questions, feel free to write our support department at support at sonicstudio.com.